Communal narcissists are the ones that you're going to find in group settings. You're going to find them in religious settings like churches or religious groups, in business settings, in work settings, in spiritual settings, in club settings, in anything where you have a gathering of people that they can pull the supply from multiple people and from the group itself and often dominate the group and then control it from within. So let's talk about communal narcissism. It's people seeking continuous supply off of their peers, off of groups of peers, off of groups of people. And not only supply, but getting into a seat of control often or a seat of power often so that they can manipulate things where if you question them, you're out. They basically become cult leaders within these community situations or if not leaders behave in a cultish way where they will draw so much attention from the group itself and make it about them rather than the group they can be do-gooder narcissists they can be the type that is out there you know like i said in situations where you'd least expect it they sometimes regard themselves actually often they think of themselves as empaths empathic people because they're always giving so much i have heard of it in the aa community where um, somebody told me that the the leader they know them personally and they are a complete narcissist in their private life but within the group they use the group to gather lots of people around them who see them as a savior of you know, obviously it's pretty toxic and it um, that person regards themselves as the grand helper and the great empath who feels for so many people when in fact they don't actually feel for the people, they're just liking the attention they get from the people. Giving gives them status. Does that make sense? Instead of giving, giving them a sense of well wellness toward them, you know, good feelings about themselves and the other person and the situation and just the joy that giving brings it gives them status, it gives them power, it gives them a, a sense of inflated self-worth. They are, will often have this attitude of deserving praise and attention and special treatment for being so giving and such a good person. It enhances their social status. It gives them power in a community and, and not only in the community that they're in, but then they can use it in other places. So say they are um, in a spiritual community and then when they're at work, they can be like, yes, I, you know, blah, blah, blah with the spiritual community. And so they can use that status that they have out in the rest of the world and collect lots of little basically harems everywhere they go to have a lot of people around them who are thinking they are amazing. So a lot of times I will talk to people who are in relationships with a communal narcissist. In their private life, this is not how they function. They are just as horrible in their private life as every other narcissist is to the person that they live with. And the problem then though, is that person has nowhere to turn because the communities that this person belongs to believes that that narcissist is a good person. And then what happens often then is that communal narcissist will then smear that their partner to these communities preemptively. Oh yeah, I'm having trouble with my wife or my husband. They're crazy, they're mean, they're hostile, they're toxic, right? And then the whole community is just waiting to have to support that poor narcissist when you, the survivor, leaves them or does anything that hurts them, right? So it's, um, it's a very twisted, I don't know how they keep so much in their head. It must be the only thing they think about. They're basically getting endless supply because if there's not one person, there's another within a community that can fill them up with supply. The reality is, as giving as they may look, right, and as nice and charismatic and friendly as they appear, they are actually people with no empathy, no real empathy. They have a high level of cognitive empathy, meaning that they can discern what people need, what a group needs. They can read the room. They can, they know cognitively what people are going through. They do not have the empathy of, of 
any other kind of empathy where they act on it, where they, well, they act on it based on what they are supposed to do, not the drive that comes from within, from a place of empathy that you act on it because it's an impulse to help someone. It's, it's all fake. So they, they have this high cognitive awareness and then they can fake it because they, they want the attention that comes back to them. They are game playing manipulators. They are saints in public and terrible at home. And no one will believe the survivor because who would look at this amazing person, right? So if you're in a social setting and you recognize this in someone, if you're like part of a group and you recognize that someone there seems like they might be like this, just keep under the radar, stay away from them, keep at a distance. You don't need to out them. You don't need to, I mean, unless you have to, right? It's, it's better to just not get involved with people like this. And when the survivor of this person steps up, hear them, send them resources, get them away from the group of people who will attack and will come after them. I mean, I've heard of a communal narcissist who used the military and the church. So they would, you know, they were in the military and they had a church they belonged to. They weren't high up or doing anything within the church. They were just a member of the church. And what, I don't know where they were in the military, but they used the military as a way to have lots of people around them where they could perform a specific role and people would give them praise. Okay, whatever, right? Whatever. Then they used the church on the emotional side where they would pull everyone's heartstrings. Oh, I've had a hard life. Oh, I have addictions. Oh, I need help, that kind of thing. And so they'd play the victim in that situation, but they had the entire backing of the church. And when the survivor went to leave this person, the entire church community would call them and try and get them back together because this poor person needed them so much. So she couldn't find support within her own community because he had already twisted the, and this was, that was the gender of them. So it could be the other way around, but um, he'd already twisted the minds of everyone so much and, and, and spoken to everyone's empathy and pulled on everyone's heartstrings so much preemptively that when she finally was able to get out, she had to completely leave the community. Have you met a communal narcissist? Have you experienced anything like this? Let me know in the comments of this video what you went through or what you're experiencing or what you think. And we'll talk more about this topic. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm a life coach over at Queen Being. And if you need anything, check out the main description of every video. There's information on where to contact me, where to get info on coaching or group coaching and where to get peer support. So if you need that, there it is hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.